Hi, I'm Roderick Burton. I am the pastor of New Northside Missionary Baptist Church. I'm really excited about the opportunity to serve this congregation and to serve this community. We believe that as we serve God, we serve Christ, we serve the community. I'd like to say good morning and welcome everybody. Back out to New Northside, the church where everybody is somebody and Christ is all. As we get ready to celebrate our Lord and Savior on this Christmas holiday, we just come to tell you that everybody ought to be able to give God thanks right here in this town. So the Bible says, let everything that has breath praise the Lord. So no matter where you are today, at home, in your car, at the grocery store, I just dare you to lift your hands and begin to thank God and celebrate him on today. For he's worthy, and he's worthy to be praised.
everyone. Hopefully you once celebrated a wonderful Christmas. Pastor Burton here. We are going to be talking about today a gift that you would not return. A gift that you would not return. So, get your Bibles out. Get ready for the word. To God be the glory. This is a day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Well, we hoping and praying that you had a very Merry Christmas. And uh, we are praying that uh, you will continue to be blessed during this season as we prepare for uh, celebrating the end of the year. Lord have mercy. 2020. We'll all be glad to see it go. Amen. And so uh, what we're going to talk about for a few moments today, we just want to talk about that you don't want to return the gift. You don't to re want to return the gift. And so our text for today is James 1, 16 through 17, reading from the New King James. Do not be deceived, my beloved brethren. Every good and every perfect gift is from above and comes from the Father of lights, in whom there is no variation or shadow of turning. And dear Heavenly Father, we just ask, Lord, that the Holy Ghost will remain present. Dear Lord, we pray that you would bless those who are viewing this, who are watching this, that they may understand, Lord. Give me clarity, Lord. Let your servant be of some use at this time. And that you, Lord, you will get the glory, and honor, and praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. So, friends, the book of James, the, the first chapter, begins with a discussion of remaining faithful or a charge to remain faithful during trials, during hard times, during difficulties, uh, uh, not to bail out, not to give up, not to run away, not to wave the white flag. And when you do, that you are showing yourself approved by God. Now, when we get to verses 16 and 17, which I believe are very timely, especially verse 17, which again says every good, every perfect gift is from above, comes down from the father of lights with whom there is no variation or shadow of terming. You say, well, yes, it's timely. Is it timely because we're going through the trials of COVID-19 or uh, economic downturn? Uh, uh, is because we're going through uh, the dangerous political divisions uh, uh, or because of the brazen foreign attacks on our uh, uh, Internet system, on computers. It, it, it's timely because we're going through dangerous, violent crime spike throughout the whole country. Yes, yes. But I'm talking about it's timely because the few days after Christmas are times that the uh, 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 Madison Avenue and the marketers are looking for revenue from people taking gifts back. That's right. Folks are taking gifts back. Everybody is not satisfied with what they receive on Christmas, if they receive something on Christmas. But I'm here to tell you, there's one gift that you do not want to take back. It's the gift that God gives. Gift that God gives are perfect. Again, Every good and every perfect gift is from above. It comes from the Father of lights in whom there is no variation or shadows of turning. See, uh, uh, you may have received clothes, but, you know, it could be the wrong size. Uh, you may have received clothes and, and it may go out of style uh, this fall when Paris rolls out the new fashion trends. You may have received clothes, but it might be cheaply made and you pull on a string and next thing you know, you got a hole. You may receive clothes again and they just might not fit you. But the gifts that God gives will perfectly fit you because God gives gifts that are tailored to you because God knows you better than anyone. Matter of fact, Jesus said in, in Matthew 10 and 30, but the very hairs of your head are numbered. That's how well God knows you. He knows how many hairs are in your head. Somebody may say, well, I got a bald head. Well, he knows how many hairs used to be on your head, all right? Somebody say amen right there. And God gives gifts that are perfect because they are perfectly fitted and tailored to you. Now, you may get a gift that needs some instructions, see, to put it together. 
Uh, many folks get stuff from Ikea, and, and everybody has put stuff together with Ikea, and either you put it together wrong, or you got to redo it again, because Ikea's instructions, uh, I don't know what to say about it. Or you may get other instructions. You sometimes gifts that come from China, the, the instructions are not, you know, they, they're written by people where English is a second language and they're not as clear as they should be. But God has perfect instructions and he's put them in this book right here for all of his gifts, for understanding his gifts. See, God has a perfect gift and he has a perfect set of instructions. Again, every good and perfect gift comes down from above from the Father of lights in whom there's no shadow or variation of turning. You know, you may get a gift, there's electronic gifts, some people probably were happy, they wanted some sort of technology, kids, not just kids, adults may have gotten an iPad, they may have gotten some sort of tablet, they may have gotten some sort of gaming system, but you know what? None of that stuff works without a power source. If you don't have a power source, if you don't have a battery and the battery can't be charged, if you don't have a cord to plug into a power source, whatever that gift is, no matter how expensive it was, somebody could give you a Tesla. And if the batteries in that Tesla are not charged, if it doesn't have a power source, that gift is useless. But you know what? God gave a gift. And that gift is Jesus. And Jesus has got power. Power from on high. And here's the thing, folks. When he died, he died and was raised back up. He raised back up alive and he, and he gave us that same power. That power is called the Holy Ghost. That's power that's not going to stop. That's power that's not going to end. That's power that's not dependent on Amron. That's power not dependent on batteries. That's power not dependent on being charged. That's Holy Ghost power. Power straight from God. Power. See, and that's the gift. And one of the things too, friends, when we think about gifts is some gifts have benefits. Some gifts have benefits, but God's gift has a multitude of benefits. No one speaks that better than David when he wrote Psalm 103 verses 1 through 5. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. David, what's the benefits? Tell us about the benefits. Who forgives all your iniquities? Why? Wow! What a benefit. You can't buy nothing in Saks Fifth Avenue. You can't get nothing on Amazon. You can't buy nothing in Walmart that's going to forgive all your iniquities, that's going to make you right with God. That's some benefit right there. David knew what he was talking about because he did some sinning. But God forgives your sinning if you ask for it. Boy, that's a benefit. Is not Jesus a benefit? Are you going to take that gift back? I don't think you will. But the scripture goes on. Who heals all your diseases. Amen. Who redeems your life from destruction. There's people who are on the road to ruin. And they cry out to the Lord and Jesus redeems them from destruction. There's people out there that are listening to me that had addictions. There's people out there who are listening to me that were on the track. I'm preaching to you. I'm telling you I was on the wrong track and he redeemed my life from destruction. Now that's a gift with some benefits. Who crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercies. If you allow the gift of God through Jesus and the Holy Ghost, if you allow it to work, if you use the instruction manual, you go from being a bitter, mean person, a person with nothing good to say, a person who can't encourage folks to someone who can encourage, a person who has no patience to a person with some patience, a person who has a lack of empathy to a person who is so empathetic. That's what this gift will do to you if you allow it to. Who crowns you with loving kindness and tenderness mercy. Who satisfies your mouth with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. Look, you can get a gift to some spa. You can let some joker rub on you for 30 minutes. You may feel good for an hour or so, but guess what? In a few more hours, you'll have that tension all back. Right? But what the Lord gives will massage your soul and give you peace even in the midst of a pandemic 
even in the midst of domestic violence, even in the midst of bullying, even in the midst of trying to figure out how you're going to stay in your house when they got eviction notes, the Lord will still give you peace. Wow, what benefit. So that your youth is renewed like the eagles. Wow. You know, there's been some gifts that have been given that cost lives. The gift of freedom as an American cost the lives of the Patriots, uh, starting there at the Boston Massacre, going through the, the War of I Independence. Matter of fact, a black man was the first one to die for freedom in America. Crispus Atux, a black man, first one to die at the Boston Massacre, among many who gave their lives for our freedom as Americans. As African Americans, folks gave their lives in the struggle for abolition, in the struggle to free the slaves. John Brown, the, Massachusetts, the, the blacks who fought during the Civil War, 185,000 African Americans fighting, fighting during the Civil War, fighting and giving their lives for our freedom. Okay? There's people who've given their lives for freedom. The, this freedom to vote and these civil rights. There's folks who laid their lives down, who spilled blood, John Lewis and so many others, a uh, 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 bloody Sunday. People gave their lives and shed blood. Mecca Evans, uh, Martin Luther King, and so many more. They gave their lives for us to have freedom. Freedom and civil rights that many people take for granted. But only one person gave his life so that our souls could be liberated. So that God would accept us. One person, and that person is Jesus. He gave a gift, a gift of his life on a cross. He shed blood, blood from his hands, blood from his head, blood from his feet, blood from his side. He gave his last breath. He gave his life to give us freedom, to give us a gift. A gift of eternal life in a sweet by and by. But benefits right now in this life. Benefits that you can read about in God's word. You going to take that gift back? You may not want to even consider taking that gift back. But for those of you who may not have accepted Jesus. He's got, God has given you a gift. He's extending his hand to you. Before this year is out. Put down those other things that you have gotten that will not bring a change in your life. Reach out and accept the gift that God has given through Jesus. Accept that gift. And if you've already accepted it, start leaning in and learning about the benefits. Start working the instructions and you will be seeing and receiving greater benefits. We need to be thankful that God gives gifts. Every good and perfect gift is from God, comes down from the Father of lights, in whom there is no shadow or variation of turning. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we're so grateful for the gift. Lord, some of us may have been unappreciative of the gifts that were given. Some of us might not have given any natural gifts this year. But Lord, we thank you for the gift that came from Jesus. Jesus, we thank you for giving yourself uh, into this life through a virgin as a baby. We thank you for giving yourself to John to be baptized by your cousin at the River Jordan. We thank you for just giving yourself to a humble life as a humble worker, as a carpenter, as a builder. We thank you for giving yourself to do miracles and to teach and to do healings and, and to reach out to those whom the world looked away from. We thank you for giving yourself fully on the cross to suffer and die. And God, we thank you for giving him uh, a resurrected life. And Jesus, we thank you for giving us the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit, the power to do all the things that you're asking us to do. But Lord, give us right now a mind to fully appreciate the benefits of the gift. Dear Lord, and give the one who has not accepted the gift, give them the courage today to accept the gift and to make a change right now. So that 2020 can end on a high note. And 2021 can be a great year for them. Dear Lord, we thank you for the gift. And we thank you for not taking it back. And Lord, we thank you for that, the fact that you promised that this gift 
will remain with us when you said you would never leave us nor forsake us. All these things we pray in the name of Jesus. Amen.